Hi everyone, and welcome to Season 2 of the Los Altos Juice Frogs Team Builder Dynasty. And Week 2 will be our first game, and we are going to be playing against the Akron Zips. This is one of the games that I promised on the recruiting trail, since I promised a lot of our Ohio recruits that we will be playing a game in their home state. So here we go. And Akron is probably one of the weaker teams in Ohio, so I thought this would be a nice way to start the season off with the win. Nice catch here by Chisholm, and Juwan Chisholm is the man. He shakes off three guys to get an additional 10 yards. And overall, I'm very excited about this season. I think we have a wealth of a talent at wide receiver, so I am looking forward to using all of our weapons this year. Here's a third and two near the goal line, and we hit the quarterback before he can pass the ball. Brings up a fourth and two, and they are forced to kick a field goal. So good start already to the season. And this time we got the ball to Cohen, and it's a first down. So brings up a third and two. I go with an audible run, and somehow it doesn't work. Normally it works against poor defenses like Akron's, but didn't work. And bringing up a crucial fourth down here. And luckily, we're able to convert the ball. One of our two very good freshmen starting uh, wide receivers. Now I think I see a man wide open. Yep, it's Warren Ball again. Nice job. And we are up 7-3. Ooh, wow. Pull this guy. He has some moves. Did you see how he jumped over our... Uh, defender and got an additional 15 yards. Great play, but somehow I think he, we shook him up because now it's Franco in and Franco is sacked. So while that run was good, it probably wasn't the wisest choice since he got hurt. And now we get the ball to Maxwell. I'm sure you guys have seen this kind of play in the first season, and here we do it again in the second season. And we are up 14-3. Oh, looks like Paul is back in the game, so maybe he's not as hurt as we uh, first imagined, but we do get to hit him here, causing a fumble. Luckily, their offensive lineman pick it up, but it brings up a third and very long. They get the ball to the receiver. It looks like he's open, and he catches the ball just beyond the first down marker. So great play there by Akron. They keep the drive alive. Pole scrambles. He gives it to Juwan Chisholm. Juwan Chisholm jukes another first down. And Juwan Chisholm, I have to say, is pretty good. I have been very impressed by this guy. Now here they get the ball to Potts, and it's a touchdown. So we get the ball back with 2.20 to go in the second quarter. Nice job, uh, Cohen picking up the pass. Uh, Cohen has uh, moved into our inside slot position now, given that he's probably one of our few guys left who doesn't have 90 speed. And here we do give it to a guy with 90 speed, and Maxwell takes it in all the way to the house. And it's 21 to 10, and we only took about half a minute off the clock. So great efficiency there. This ball definitely should be picked off, but no, the Akron player gets it. And out jumps three of our defenders. Here goes Poe on the run again, and we'll drag him down, but not before he gets inside the 10. So setting up a first and 10 at the goal line. This pass is picked off by Woods. Can Woods take it all the way? It looks like he almost stepped out of bounds. I think he did, but somehow the computer didn't catch that, and or maybe he was just close and didn't go out of bounds. But anyway, Woods takes it all the way, and somehow Santonio Woods sets the record for longest international uh, inter interception return, not just on our team, but in the NCAA. Just crazy. Cole drops back the pass plenty of time, and he's got a man wide open. And I think that's one area of focus for me, is to recruit better uh, defensive backs. Because right now we don't have very good defensive backs. And you know, we may be able to beat Akron, but I feel like we're going to be exposed. And this Akron Zips mascot, I am not sure what this is. Is this a kangaroo or an armadillo? It's unclear to me. But he's celebrating, even though they're down by 18 points. Interesting, that's definitely a super fluid celebration if there ever is one. And this time we got them stacked up, forcing a field goal. So now it's 28-13 with half a minute left. 
Pero looks long, he's got a man open, and it's Sapp. Chad Sapp's got his first touchdown of the year. And I have to say, Chad Sapp is a player that I am extremely high on. He has 92 speed, he has 86 acceleration, and he has over 70 catch. So now we get the ball again to start the third quarter. And basically, the game is already in the books at this point. Look at Connor Harrell's numbers. Four touchdowns, zero interceptions, 300 yards. I mean, granted, this is against a poor team. Uh, Akron with just terrible defensive schemes like this. Maxwell takes it in again. It's 42-13, just like that. But it's definitely uh, good to see that we don't have any interceptions, even though we could probably throw a couple and still win this game easily. Now Akron's coming back, uh, down by 29. They give it to Juwan Chisholm again. Juwan Chisholm jukes two guys, jukes three guys. I miss a dive. Probably should not have dove there. And Juwan Chisholm takes it in. So it's 42-20. This time Harold looks deep. He's got man wide open by like 10 steps. It's Maxwell. And this one's not even close. He could just walk it all the way to school. It's 49 to 20. I'm kind of wishing that Akron scores more quickly so that we can actually score more. Uh, obviously, I don't like to run up the score in online ranked matches, but in offline dynasties, running up the score is very necessary. Uh, yeah, especially this year because wow, and Juwan Chisholm, he breaks off four tacklers and takes it all the way to the hole. Unbelievable. That should not happen against the inferior team, but I guess Juwan Chisholm is probably one of the best players on their team. Here we got a man wide open, but somehow I was a little bit hesitant and we were sacked, bringing up a third and 18. Harold looks deep again. I think he's open. I think Cunningham is open, but unfortunately Harold overthrows Cunningham. So going back to what I was saying earlier, it's very necessary to run up the score, especially in the early games of the season. Nice interception here by Downs, and I think Downs is going to be a star player this year. You guys remember how huge he was last year in that game against Idaho, and I think he's going to be even better this year. I mean, he can tackle, he can cover, he can run, he's great. But here, uh, it brings up a third and 18, and Harold sacked again to bring up a fourth and 25. So unfortunately, we're not able to do anything, but I think it's important to score as many points as we can because playing style is one of the categories in the recruiting, and it's important to uh, drive up the playing style to A plus for the categories that we care about, which is QB pass and wide receiver reception. Unfortunately, uh, Cunningham does not count towards wide receiver reception totals because he's a running back, even if he's playing a wide receiver spot. So as a result, it's even more important to run up the score because not all of our uh, receiving touchdowns and receiving passes will be counted as part of our wide receiver receiving stat. And given that we're a cupcake school that's just starting out with no coach prestige, no, uh, no uh, program tradition, none of that stuff, we need to get as many good ratings as we can, and playing style is definitely one of them. Especially since I'm trying to build an offensive line that's all high on pass blocking ratings, which is uh, also related to the wide receiver pass and uh, QB pass ratings. So in offline dynasties, it definitely pays to be bad mannered. Here we get to Henry. Henry is definitely another player that we're very high on. This guy I think has 95 speed. But unfortunately, only like 76 acceleration, so he's definitely a backup player, but it's nice to see him get some playing time. And here it's another 4th and 3, so we're not able to convert, but it doesn't really matter. We already got Freeman in the game. Uh, it's pretty much just a victory lap. I'm trying to get these backups some stacks, because one concern I do have is that uh, with 5 uh, wide receiver recruits, last year that I'm worried that some of these guys will transfer before they blossom into legitimate players. That's a legitimate concern, especially since uh, we're using Cunningham as a wide receiver as well. So that's taking away playing time from the other receiver. So Akron scores another touchdown. I'm not too worried as long as we get the onside kick, which we do. So now we're up by 14 uh, and still trying to run up the Still trying to run up the stats, even though we're going to mass sub. I'm still going to try to run up the stats. And hopefully we'll just be able to take him all the way here. And get another touchdown. 
Okay, we got man wide open. Yep, it's Henry this time. It's nice to see Henry get in on some of the action. And it is 56 to 35. And that ends up being the final. So great game against a far inferior opponent. So can't really uh, take away too much confidence from this. But it's nice to see Maxwell get a lot of touchdowns as well as the rest of our team. In terms of the stats, I think we had one turnover at the end. It was Freeman, but that was when the game was already decided. 0 for 5 for a third down conversion. Extremely, extremely unexpected, given that we dominated this game. I would not expect to be 0 for 5 on third down conversions, but we did convert a fourth down, and we scored a lot of points on first and second down, I guess. So it's great to see that everybody got in on the action. A lot of people came up big. So that's it for this game. Hope you guys enjoyed. And next week we are going to be taking on the Utah Utes again. That's going to be a rivalry game. And it's going to be a tough game. So we'll see how far we have progressed.